Hello there, uh, welcome back to violentservice.co.uk. Obviously, I'm Mark and uh, my colleague there, my best pal Chris, is doing a bit of filming. Uh, we had a lot of inquiries and um, people making, asking for information concerning servicing the boilers. So, we thought we'd make a very quick video just to give a brief explanation of what's done, what should be done, and what you should be getting for your money. Now, we're looking at the moment at this Valent Eco Max, which is a condensing boiler. So, this is the more modern type of equipment that's available nowadays. and um, usually they don't get serviced as much as they should. So we're going to have a look at this and a lot of the reasons why you need to have them looked at. Now this particular type of appliance, due to technology and the way it's advanced over the last sort of four or five years, now uses a different way of method of burning the gas. Now the idea is, is it's a very, very efficient way of burning the gas, as opposed to letting the gas being pushed in by the gas pipe work as it comes down the pressure of the pipes, we actually put a fan on the gas supply now and we physically pump the mixture into the combustion chamber, which is this section just up in here. And then we pump water around that, and that's what distributes the heat out to your central heating and to your hot water cylinders or to your hot water tap. Now, this is fantastic technology because it is very, very efficient. But we have not a drawback, but one of the advantages and disadvantages is the fact that Using this technology, we do generate some very intense temperatures and high intensity, high intensity flame pictures inside this combustion chamber, which in turn means that because we're forcing the actual mixture in, the mixture is actually, or the flame, is trying to push its way out continuously whenever the boiler's on. Now, we have some equipment to test this type of technology because we don't use the old fashioned methods where we used to just take the boiler apart and have a look. And because it's sealed in there, we can't actually see what's going on. So this is where this piece of kit comes in. Now this is what's called a flue gas analyzer. And they are very expensive. They can range anything from sort of five to six hundred pounds up to a thousand pounds. And if you're lucky enough to actually buy one and have one for yourself, it will cost you probably another hundred to two hundred pounds a year just to enable to you to get it serviced and calibrated so you can actually use it. So it's a very, very expensive piece of kit. But Realistically, although it's not a legal requirement, but realistically you can't carry out any work on this type of boiler unless you've got one of these babies. And uh, as I said, they're very expensive, but really in my opinion for what it's worth, you can't really work on this equipment without one of these. It's the only way of actually checking and testing the equipment. Now as far as the servicing procedures are concerned, there are two methods. Because of the technology involved, if you've got this piece of equipment, the manufacturers state that it's not always necessary to actually carry out full service on the appliance, which means a lot of companies and a lot of engineers, and quite rightly so, can come in, they can use the analyzer, they take a sample of the fluid gases from at the top of the boiler here, they take some readings, and from those readings they should be able to work out how well the boiler is performing. Now, the old philosophy of um, let's not try and fix something that isn't broke is what we use, and therefore if the boiler passes all the necessary criteria on the printout, we can walk away from the border and say, well, your board is fine, it's working safely, and disappear for another year. However, that's not always necessarily the best policy. Now, as far as I'm concerned, if I'm paying for someone to do some work for me, I expect them to complete some work. So we tend to find, or we tend to follow the manufacturer's instructions as far as the full service is concerned on every visit. Now, to do that, we need to inspect the inside of the boiler and especially the combustion chamber. And there's various other bits and bobs in there. We have a sump and a condensate trap at the bottom that needs to be checked and cleared if necessary. And we check some other bits and bobs, as well as doing the mandatory safety checks. Now, to enable me to do that, you know, I've done a Gallup and Gourmet, which is the old chef from about 30 years ago on the TV, TV and I prepared something earlier. So I'm just going to quickly remove the air intake pipe from here so you can actually see what's involved when we take it out. Now we have to unbolt the main burner combustion chamber here, which is bolted onto the fan and the gas supply and the gas valve and some various other bits of controls. Once we strip that out, ideally we should be able to simply lift the burner assembly out so we can actually inspect all the burner and the burner assembly itself, the insulation board in here, and most importantly, you might be able to see it there, we have a thin black line going around the outside, which is a graphite combustion chamber seal. Now this is very important that this is checked and if this is removed it is a mandatory requirement that that seal has to be changed on every visit. If this isn't removed 
then and can do our normal test with the analyzer and we can walk out the door and leave it. But to do the job properly, ideally you should be removing this, which means that that seal would have to be replaced. Now as well as actually doing that, we can clean the burner and we can clean this thing here which is called an electrode and that's what actually creates the spark and lights the gas and actually recognises the flame. So it's quite an important piece of kit because that actually identifies that the flame is on and leaves the burner running. Now if I can just put that down for a second. If we look inside the heat exchanger itself you can see here there's a various and massive coils going around the inside here and then when the boiler condenses, which is what it's designed to do, the condensate runs around the edge of these coils and collects in this area under here where I can put my finger in if I do that. And this is what's called a sump area. The water collects in there, or the condensate collects in there, which is acidic by the way. And that runs down into this trap, down through the trap, and then hopefully, if it's been put in correctly, it will run away to a safe place in a drain where it's not going to do anyone any harm. Now obviously to do all this and to inspect this and to clean this area, I have to remove this whole burner assembly as a kit, a proper service. Now, if we don't replace that seal, or we have a problem with those seals, we have a bit of a nasty side effect. And this isn't just for valent boilers, so it's not aimed at any particular boiler or manufacturer at all, but it's just generally, if we look at, have a look at this is which what we took out of a boiler, it's very difficult to see, but I'll try and put it on end on. This is an old plate off the front of a combustion chamber. The seal had actually broken down and leaked, and because of the intense heat, I don't know if you can see that, but it's actually warped the whole plate mechanism at the front here, which means the intense heat from the flame inside was then escaping and getting out into the burner, right into the inside of the boiler chamber. Now, ordinarily you'd think, well, okay, it's a bit warm, not so much of a problem. As you can see there, that is quite a lot of damage to do, and that, believe me, is quite a thick piece of plate. Now, the side, the, 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 the other thing that's quite worrying is, is if you look at this air intake I have on the wall here, you can see there, I'm going to Chris can zoom in on that and have a closer look, but you can see in this particular instance, the boiler actually caught on fire. So it's quite a serious problem if it occurs, although this isn't obviously on every boiler. These, are, these occur very rarely, but it's usually due down to poor maintenance or the seals haven't been changed on a regular basis. So just something to be a little bit wary of, just in case, if you have got a boiler, it's something that should be checked, if not every year, but at least every couple of three years, those seals, I would say, personally, I'd like to see them changed and checked. So once we've got the new seal on, and we've done all the rest of the checks on the burner, we can simply mount this back in, hopefully. It should just pop straight back up on there. And then, once we've bolted it all together, the air intake can go in, and we can then fire up and commission the boiler. That's gonna stay there, which it probably isn't. Yes, it is, there you go. So, there you go. Once that's all in, then, then, it would be a good idea to carry out the full gas analysis after you've completed the service so that you then know that all the work's been done correctly and the board is working as it should. Now I'm going to put some photographs which should be somewhere sort of down there underneath the video clip on the, on the web page. So you're going to see some pictures of some heat exchanges with what collects inside and hopefully you should be able to give see you, uh, I'm going to give you a printout of what comes off the printer because everything's recorded by print on one of these printers that comes with the, the analyzer, and that will give you all the readings, and you can check for yourself then to see what exactly your border is doing, and give the information. Now, once you've had your border serviced, ideally, you should be left with something that looks like this, which is the packaging that the seal comes in, and somewhere in there, there should be an old seal knocking about, so you should have an old box left on the worktop, and you should have a printout from the analyzer you can then look at and see how the board has been performing and how it will perform hopefully for the near future. Well I hope that's been some, some use to you and uh, hopefully next time we have your border serviced you'll be able to understand exactly what's going on. So uh, that's it for today. So for myself and uh, Aunt Chris over there, see you next time. Bye bye.